What is up guys, Michael here and welcome back to my YouTube channel. So today we're going to talk about what is the best lens for fitness photography and what lens you should probably look at buying first. Now this is not going to be just about fitness photography. As some of you guys know that have been on the channel for a while, I shoot a wide variety of um, photos, um, mainly in the portrait range. And what I mean by that is I shoot weddings, fitness, editorial and fashion, um, boudoir, and all these type of stuff. So portraits, basically anything that has to do with people, I kind of do photography of. And I have three main lenses I use in this genre, but today we're going to look at one lens that I would recommend you buy first as it's going to be probably the most versatile and it's been one of my favorites to use. And that lens is the 70-200 from Canon. More specifically, the 7200 EF Mark II with image stabilization and all those bells and whistles and lovely things. Now, this is by no means a budget lens. This is one of uh, Canon's top end lenses, not currently because Canon has brought out the RF range, but to be quite honest, this still works perfectly. It is pin sharp. Now, why am I telling you to buy this specific lens first? Now, my kit consists mainly out of three lenses. Now, I have a variety of other lenses that I do use, but these are the three lenses that I normally have with me on shoots. I've got a 70 to 200. I've got the 24 to 70 from Canon Mark 1 EF and also the 85 millimeter 1.2 uh, EF Mark 2 from Canon. So those are the three lenses I use on a day to day basis. I can't go without them. They are my favorites. But if I had to tell you to pick one of those three and a lot of people will tell you to pick the 85, it's very expensive and it's a great lens, don't get me wrong, but I find myself enjoying the 70 to 200 the most. So to better explain why I've picked the 70 to 200 as my go-to lens for you guys to buy, we're going to look at three different practical categories. Now, these three categories are the ones that I would say are the most important for any professional photographer's lens to have. And those are hit and miss rate, sharpness and versatility. Now we're going to start off with hit and miss rate because this is one of the most frustrating ones that most photographers have where you think you've got focus on the eye and suddenly the camera is just has that little bit of focus breathing or just slightly off the eye where you hit the nose and that is quite frustrating in portraits. Now on the 24 to 70 about 70% of the time I will get eye focus and that's fantastic that's why it's also one of the lenses that's in my camera bag it is perfect so you know I can live with a 70% hit rate. And on the 85, that's about a 50%. And that is one of the reasons it's the one that's not the one that I'm recommending you should buy. Um, the 85 is a fantastic lens. And when you do get that hit, it's perfect. It's one of my favorite images then. And I can definitely guarantee that it's one of my favorite lenses. That is why it still stays in my camera bag. But equivalent to the 70 to 200, which about 90% of the time, perfectly sharp on the eye, especially for such a long focal length, that is fantastic. And the detail it just gets is amazing. So yeah, that is why the 70 to 200 is my pick because of its hit and miss rate, which, you know, you gotta have that. Now, number two, sharpness. Now, again, sharpness is very important in photos. I mean, today's photos are a little bit over sharp in my opinion, but still you wanna get sharp focus on the eyes and well, wherever you are intending to shoot. So. This is where the 24 to 70 kind of lacks a little bit. I kind of find it still being sharp technically, but it doesn't look as sharp as what I would get on the 85 when the 85 hits my target and the 70 to 200. So that's where the 24 to 70 kind of, you know, lets me down a bit. And it's why it's not one of my most favorite lenses to use, but its versatility is definitely there. On the 85, that thing is pin sharp. When it's sharp, it is sharp. It is definitely a winner. So if you are looking at like a perfect prime lens, which, you know, prime lenses are definitely my favorite, um, then the 85 is your thing. I mean, it's better than the 50 mil in my opinion. So definitely 85, razor sharp on the eyes when it does hit focus. And then the 70 to 200. Again, also perfectly sharp. Like I said, the level of detail this lens can capture is just amazing. So that is why it is my pick. Again, I hate to repeat myself, but like I can't stress enough why that is so important. And if you are looking at portraits, that's very important to you. So the 70 to 200 just 
it, the level of detail this lens can capture, even at it, like because it's a f2.8, you know, it's not as shallow depth of field as the f1.2, but you know, it doesn't help. It's a shallow depth of field, but your person's out of focus. So the detail this thing can capture, amazing. And you know, I can trust this lens. And then the last practical category, versatility. Now this is where the kind of like the fitness style of things comes in. Now, when you're shooting in that style, like that environment where there's a lot of obstacles, a lot of equipment around and they're kind of getting in your way, having something a little bit more versatile than a prime lens is favorable. Not saying that you can't work around it, but having a little bit of a zoom lens there does definitely help in my opinion, if you can't move big gym equipment out of the way. Which could be a thing that happens, you know, on other shoots like editorials or weddings or all of that. It's not specifically at fitness, but this is where I found, um, where I started noticing it the most um, because I was a big user of the 85 back in the day. So having a zoom lens, so that's where the 24 to 70 comes in. When you really do not have the space, you can go down to about a 50 mil or 35 mil. I wouldn't go any lower than 35 mil. And if you're working at close ups, definitely I wouldn't like to be at 35 mil. I'd, I'd just rather not do that photo. But having something with a zoom capability and those style of cramped environments definitely helps. So that's where the 24 to 70 has the versatility. Now I've already said it, 85 being a prime lens, fixed focal length, doesn't have that versatility. Does I mean it's bad? You know, there are ways to work around it. Work with your environment if that's what you have. Perfect. But it's not as versatile as a zoom lens, which is understandable. It's not what it's built for. And then the 70 to 200. You have a 70 to 200 versatile range, which, you know, now that, now that I've said the 85, you know, not as versatile because you, you know, if you're in cramped spaces and all of that, 70 is not that much different. Um, yes and no. What's nice about the versatility on this, or I was gonna sneeze. What's nice about the versatility on this is that you can get that level of compression you can really blow out the background. So that's where the F2.8 doesn't matter anymore. You can go far away. So if you've got that space, you can really get this amazing look, in my opinion, which you only get around about above like 100 millimeter. And it's got that magazine quality look, which I love, which is what I aim for in my photos. So then the reason I'm saying this is I just did a past photo shoot and I just noticed because the last photo shoot I did, I shot a lot on the 24 to 70 and then I shot on the 70 to 200 of well, like the next day and I just really love the images this lens produced. So yes, in cram spaces, this is not the lens for you, but when it shines, it shines and it means you can get some compression in you, it means you get some close-ups with it without having to walk all the way up into somebody's space and you can really blur out the background, especially if there's people in it and that's fantastic. So that is why it's my favorite lens for fitness photography. And it's pretty much, you can ask any photographer, it's one of their favorite lenses in their bag. No professional portrait photographer kind of goes without a 70 to 200 unless you are a diehard prime shooter, which again, primes are fantastic. I love them myself. And yeah, I know this video was not as technical as a lot of people want, but I'm a practical photographer. I don't really do the technicalities of it. Yes, I understand the technicalities of it, but I kind of feel the art of photography gets lost with all the science of it. Go out, take good photos, learn from them, use the equipment you have at hand, and I can promise you the gear you have is more than suitable um, at that time. You can definitely upgrade. If you are looking at upgrading, get good glass. You can buy the EF range of 70-200s, which still fits on the Canon bodies quite perfectly. Um, Second hand for very cheap. So, you know, it's not a real budget lens, but it's cheaper than RF glass, so that's a win, and it's luxury glass. So definitely I can recommend that. So yeah, if you guys have any questions, please leave it in the comment section down below. I would love to answer any of your questions, even if you just like this video, just you know, tell me down below. I can tell you guys to stuff off. Um, yeah, if you did enjoy this video, if it's something that kind of intrigued you a little bit from a practical photographer sense, um, give a thumbs up. And if you guys haven't already, there's a subscribe button down below. So I would love for you guys to click that and, you know, maybe be part of the community. I also have a Discord, which is linked down below. I don't even know if the link still works. I'll go check that out for you guys. But yes, you can join us there on the Discord and you can just talk and ask some questions. And one of the photographers there will help you if it's not me. So yeah, with that all said and done, hope you guys enjoyed this video and I'll see you all next time. Bye.
Thank you.